but in Mildura, a lot of people are related, see? So. Along the river, like along in here, the Swan Hill to the Churka, and people move backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards over the river, backwards and forwards up the river, because it's families and, yeah. So I said, you don't say, I don't say I'm an Aboriginal person, I say I'm of Aboriginal descent because I've got, you know, I've got Scottish blood and what have you, so we've all got that, nearly. None of us have got pure, but it's all down here anyway, up north still. Down here none of us have got full blood parents. That's no. I don't believe in segregation because it, the real world's not that. You know, you're never gonna go to a black school and get a job in a black world. It's not gonna happen. We opened a code school here. They were called Curry Open Door Education Schools for a reason. They were government schools. Ours was a campus of Chafee Secondary College. But they were set up for any student that didn't fit into mainstream schooling, which is students from every walk of life. And, but they were, culturally based, so they were, to, they were to be, the curriculum was to be a, around culture. But, and the open door bit was, because we got a, we got accused of, you know, apartheid and segregation and all that when I was doing all the work around it, but the open door was the, was the bit that stopped that. But you then had to go and um, get a job in mainstream and, you know, and then the Koori unit at TAFE is similar, but to, to sort of counteract some of that, I believe that because it, it gives people a foot in the door, they're in a comfortable environment, it's their space. But then go and do some electives in the mainstream college because you're not going to go to uni or black uni. Or... So I don't believe in segregation so like that. I, I just think that's not the real world anymore. I mean, that's my opinion, it's maybe some of the others, but. I know during the war that up north they set up their own little army groups, but when you look at most of them went to war as just as Australian soldiers. How they were treated when they come back was a different story, but actually going to war. See, Robin Bar was just a nully scrub, and then, um, and see, because Dad didn't go into war as an Aboriginal person, he was given a soldier settlement block, and that's how Robin Bar grew out of out of nully scrub into this huge thing of vineyards and um, so we all grew up with the same backgrounds all of us um, we all you know all of us post-war babies and the pre-war ones were a bit older when they came to Robin Vale but the post-war what well, we all grew up the same lot and um, our parents had been through similar stuff and so we and to this day Robin Vale is still a family even though we're spread far and wide and um, not many original people left in Robinvale these days because obviously after the war they've gone on quite, they're getting, you know, getting on in years, the blockies are, but, um, yeah, so it's it's just, the, yeah, just the way it was. It was just a family and I guess that's, I guess that's how mob are when they get together. It's not that you're blood so much as that you're family. And, you know, in the Aboriginal community, you know, everyone's an aunt or an uncle or a cousin or a brother or a sister or, you know, it doesn't matter who they are. It's still auntie or, you know, that respect stuff. Auntie or uncle or, you know, cousin, brother, sister. So it's just, I think that's in the, in the Aboriginal communities anyway. It doesn't matter where you're from. Just, it's just there. I don't think you learn it or you do it or you try and you just do it once it's there. And, and just the way we were brought up, that's because the result of what went on.